Robomate Plus, India's largest curriculum based study app. Download the app now. Welcome students to the next interesting module of this chapter. Now we all know that the stamens have the anthers on their top which produce the pollen grains whereas the egg cell or the female gamete is present right at the bottom of the carpel in the ovary. So how do pollen grains reach till there? They reach there by the process of pollination. So what is pollination? Pollen grains from the anther are transferred to the stigma of the flower and this process is called as pollination. Now during pollination, if the pollen grains from the anther of the flower fall on the stigma of the same flower or it falls on the stigma of some other flower but on the same parent plant, it is called as self-pollination. However, students, plants of same species are present in large numbers in the same area. So sometimes pollination involves two flowers born on two different plants but of the same species. If such a thing happens, then it is called as cross-pollination. Friends, in cross-pollination, anthers of one flower send their pollen grains or transfer their pollen grains to the stigma of some another flower which is on totally different plant but of the same species. As we all know, with the help of biotechnology, Today, new plants are being developed. So, students, while discovering the new high-yielding and resistant varieties of plants, scientists bring about the pollination with the help of a brush. And this is called as artificial pollination. Friends, now most important thing, pollination occurs sometimes with the help of abiotic agents like wind. If it takes place with the help of wind, then it is called as anemophily. Students, wind acts as an agent of cross-pollination. Not only wind, but also water helps to transfer the pollen grains from anthers to stigma in aquatic plants. Such a pollination is called as hydrophily. Friends, after this, you also have some biotic agents like living organisms also helping in cross-pollination. For example, insects like honeybees, etc. If it takes place with the help of insects, it is called as entomophily. However, there can also be birds like bats, etc. or animals like even elephants helping in pollination. Students, during pollination, just as there are changes happening in the anther, there are also some changes that take place in the carpel. Stigma becomes sticky during pollination. The cells of the stigma secrete a sugary solution because of which the stigma becomes sticky. Friends, pollen grains are very light. If they fall off the stigma, they are of no use to the flower. So, stigma becomes sticky so that the pollen grains can settle there efficiently. Moving further, because of the sugary solution, the pollens germinate when they fall upon such sticky stigma. Moving further, a long pollen tube and two male gametes are formed. Now, when the pollen grains germinate, they sprout and that sprout is nothing else but a long pollen tube which is produced and inside this pollen tube eventually two male gametes or the two reproductive cells are seen. Friends, what happens further? The pollen tube carries these male gametes till the embryo sac via the style. Friends, the pollen tube keeps growing in length. It dissolves the tissues of the style and reaches till the embryo sac. Furthermore, tip of the pollen tube bursts near the embryo sac and two male gametes are released in the embryo sac. 
Now, since there are two male gametes, they will go and fuse with two different cells. So, which are they? Let us try to understand. First and foremost, one male gamete unites with the X cell to form the first cell of life called as zygote. The unicellular zygote is formed by the union of the first male gamete and the X cell. So, this is the first primary fertilization. After this, the second male gamete now enters the embryo sac and it goes near the central cell with two polar nuclei. The second male gamete unites with the two polar nuclei and endosperm is formed. So, this is a second fertilization and that is why we say in flowering plants because you have two fertilizations it is called as double fertilization. Friends moving further what happens after fertilization? The zygote which is unicellular now starts dividing vigorously. The ovule because of the development of the zygote converts into the seed. And what happens then to the ovary? Friends, the ovary is now converted into fruit. How does this happen? After fertilization, all the parts of the flower like the petals, sometimes the sepals, the stamens, they fall off. The ovary enlarges in size and converts itself in fruit. Now my friends, when such fruit breaks up, the seeds are scattered in the environment and they fall upon ground. When they find suitable environment of sunlight, water, oxygen, lot of moisture etc. The seed starts germinating. The seeds germinate in soil under the favorable conditions. Friends, because of this, the zygote develops at the cost of the food stored in it. The developing zygote absorbs all the endosperm, starts growing and the endosperm of the seed helps in this and thus a new plantlet is formed. That means from a seed a new plant develops up. Students, this is called as seed germination and this is how Plants reproduce in nature. Friends, with this interesting information, we complete the part of reproduction in plants. To see reproduction in animals, especially human beings, we will go to the next part of our chapter. Thank you for watching this video lecture. To watch more such interesting videos, attempt tests, and to get instant analysis, download the RoboBait Plus app now.